Okay, everybody, we're back um, with some more uh, Battle of Solzy for Roads to Leningrad. So, you know, one of the interesting things about making these movies, or movies, yeah, it's totally movies, I'm a director. Uh, one of the things about making these recordings while you play is that it's interesting to play and talk about at the same time. I haven't done a lot of these. I think there's other people who've done more of these videos, and I bet they're kind of nodding their head that sometimes you say kind of ridiculous things, or you get on tangents, or you forget certain things that you mentioned earlier. Uh, it's really funny to catch your own errors as you watch these videos uh, over again and sort of check and double check, did I do everything correctly? Uh, and I'm happy to say that most of what I did last turn was, was pretty good. <clears throat> I only made a couple of minor errors. I've detailed that on, I believe the video is on YouTube. I've also posted these on Board Game Geek, So I believe I have all those listed there as well. Uh, if you see any other errors in play, please let me know. I'm trying to be as accurate as I can. I mean, I've played the Road series, something, this is now my like seventh playthrough of a scenario. So you would think that I would uh, have the rules down. But any kind of war game of even this kind of complex complexity, because there is a lot going on here. Um, you're going to drop rules, or you're going to forget certain things, or you're going to make little mistakes, uh, like I did with advancing after combat with my um, uh, anti-air here. They actually can never advance after combat because uh, artillery, anti-air, and anti-tank units that are orange circle, I think they all are. I don't think there's a single artillery unit in the game that's not orange circle or anything. Uh, they don't get to advance after combat. Uh, I made that mistake I advanced earlier because this group was part of this larger armor stack and I just brought them along. It, it actually wasn't a huge error because I determined by looking at the video that I could have still have made it here for combat, uh, even if I, despite the fact that I erroneously advanced them, if we kept them in their original spot, they still could make it there with their movement. So, you know, that, that's a minor error. What was less of a minor error was the calculations I was doing here for this battle. So if you recall at the end, this was the final battle of the last turn, and the 8th Panzer forces had kind of surrounded this uh, stack of the 3rd tanks. And this uh, motorcycle infantry had... It is infantry, by the way. I feel like a fool. It's not motorcycle cavalry. I mean, it has the diagonal stripe. It's really motorcycle infantry. I was being kind of silly. I knew that, and I just was pulling the wrong term out of my head. And then I went with it. So there you go. Um, so if you recall, the motorcycle infantry kind of came over here and had a really kind of risky uh, assault. 2-1 to one assault against an artillery unit there. Succeeded. Huge victory. Unfortunately, this battle was a very bad roll indeed, and I think I suffered something like two step losses, and it was also armor attrition, so I had to lose an armor step. Um, unfortunately, when I was reviewing the video, what I forgot to do was in my preparation for the battle roll, that sort of final roll you make and you're calculating all the DRMs, um, I had forgotten that when I did a combat coordination roll, because I had three guys, I had guys attacking from more than one hex, it was a mobile combat. And one of the things I forgot to do was add plus two because I had guys attacking from three or more hexes. Um, that, on review, if I look at the roll, I would have failed the roll. And then because of failing that roll, I would have had a plus two to my final battle roll, which would have changed the results of what happened. Instead of getting like an attacker two, defender one um, result with armor attrition, it would have been attacker retreats. And I believe... Let me double check that. Yeah, it would have been attacker retreats, no armor attrition. So I'm conflicted. And also one thing I kind of messed up was uh, how armor attrition actually gets executed. And the way it works is this. So if I have a force with attacking armor, as I did here with the 8th Panzer, and the force I attack either has red defense strength or has armor units. In this case, the stack had armor units. Um, if you get a red result, you have to take an armor loss, right? Even if the, the CRT does not mandate a loss, if it just says like attack or retreat, but it's a red result, you have to take a step loss of armor if the defender has an armor unit or had a, a defense red defense strength unit. If the defender takes losses in a combat that involves armor attrition, the unit that qualifies for armor attrition must take a loss. And that only kind of makes sense, right? Because that's the unit that actually is doing the damage on the other side. It makes sense if you were taking losses that it would probably incur the, the brunt of the damage, right, during the combat. So in this mistake I made, I made another mistake in the sense that I had them, I had, the, I did the German losses correctly. The Germans do lose one step of, so, of armor and they lost one of their motorcycle infantry, which was uh, not great. But I had the Soviets lose this sort of mechanized, uh, uh, motorized, sorry, not mechanized, motorized infantry. 
And really what they should have done is lost a tank instead. Uh, a tank step, because that's what this unit did not qualify them for armor attrition. Only the armor units did in that stack. Uh, you know, it's one of those errors I probably could correct and redo. It does it does give the game a little interesting flavor, because of course, uh, you know, having so many panzer steps, it's going to make this more brittle, uh, the attacking force. So I'm going to have to think a little bit more. Uh, the last game, like I said, that I played through this scenario, I didn't lose a single step of armor. I think I was kind of not playing the armor attrition rules correctly, because I didn't realize you have to lose a step if you meet all the criteria and the, and the CRT is red. Like, you have to lose a step, even if it says attacker retreats. Um, or you inflict only defender losses. You still have to lose a step. This, the one shining thing is that I'll actually have to give them back this and then take an armor unit instead. And so I was at negative three VPs, and that'll actually just put me back to negative one because I get, um, or actually I only get one point. So actually put me at negative two. I get one point for every armor I kill. Double check that. I mean, I think that's true. Yeah, plus one for armor or artillery and three for HQs. So I really need to be tracking down the HQs. Um, so we look here and we're sort of thinking, well, there's a zero stack unit. Obviously, we're not going to have this guy take the bite the bullet, so we'll have this tank go away. I think that's the best way to solve this issue. I could go back and do an attacker retreats and, and figure out, you know, where they ran away from and, and all that. But, you know, the armor attrition is really a really cool factor of the system. I know it, it, some people are going to look at that and get upset because they want their CRTs to be very um, understandable, organizable, and progressing towards a state of absolute perfection in the sense that you bring more forces to bear and you're just going to get better results. Uh, the CRT for this game is definitely has a few holes in it, and uh, not only with the losses incurred on both sides, but the fact there's armor attrition, which, you know, I think it's a great way to integrate uh, the steady loss of your best elements. I mean, obviously, you're not just going to put your infantry in forward. You're not always going to have your motorcycle infantry in the front. Um, you know, forces that attack you are going to be looking for your tanks. They're going to look to take away your advantage. So, you know, armor attrition just makes a lot of sense. It adds a perfect friction of war. It also helps Germans lose steps that otherwise may not be lost. Uh, just through Soviet defenses because it can be tough to crack. It can be tough to get good either attack odds or to not have them have favorable attack odds against you as a Soviet player. It's, it's difficult. So one other thing I want to mention is some people might be thinking, well, you failed the combat coordination role because you had too many attacking hexes. Why not just keep you know your panzer here because you move them up here. Why not just keep them with that stack and then you wouldn't have had that die roll modifier roll, right? Then I wouldn't have made that mistake. And part of the reason I don't think I explained it, the reason I did this maneuver around this unit was I was trying to create, I was trying to envelop them in a zone of control so that if I did get a retreat result, uh, they would have to retreat through a vacant hex that has a zone of, enemy zone of control. And in doing so, um, they actually would have to take losses. And in, in the way I had it set up here, uh, so what happens is, so if, if you have a stack and it retreats and has to retreat, through a vacant enemy zone of control. You can't end in an enemy zone of control. If you do, you're eliminated. But if you retreat through a vacant enemy zone of control hex, um, you have to make an ER check for that stack. Uh, if they pass, they don't take a step loss. If they don't pass, they take a step loss. If the retreating stack it has no uh, MA units, red box MA units, and the ones that are exerting the zones of control around the retreating stack do, then you take an automatic step loss, and then you roll to see if you take another. So, you know, motorized guys can be very devastating on infantry stacks, which, you know, if they're attacking, say, like these Soviet guys up here, you know, you can surround them and then instantly kind of eliminate them pretty quickly. It's, it's a devastating way to bring that kind of force to bear. Um, and that's kind of the reason I did that here, because if you look, if I had gotten a retreat result, uh, it would have been mobile combat. So he, the defender would have had the option of moving back two spaces. So I can't, I can't go here and here because I'm in zone of control. I couldn't have gone here and he I could have actually gone there. That would have been the only hex, um, this one right here. That would have been the only safe hex to go to because I could not have gone here and here. I couldn't have gone up to there and there. I, couldn't have, I could have gone actually down here. I could have retreated this way, which would have been an interesting choice. I could have done that. But I still would be taking an ER check loss because even though the stack has all red box MAs, so there wouldn't be like an automatic loss for having to retreat through a zone of control of red box MA units. I know that sounds kind of confusing. It's, it's really not. It's easy to remember. Um, these guys wouldn't take an auto loss, but they might have had to take another loss. And because their ER ratings, as you see, are four and four, I mean, that's pretty good chances I'm going to get to bag another step had I been able to cause a retreat result. 
Uh, I didn't. As you know, I sort of took more losses than I anticipated as the German player, but uh, that happens. And that's a mistake I made, and I'm okay with keeping it like that because um, I could kind of go back and say, no, I want my armor set back, but you know, I'd be giving them back an armor step, and I'd be doing some other things. So I'm okay with it. The way it kind of worked out, it happens. And it also goes to show in this game that you know, you're going to make mistakes, especially with a game with a lot of die roll modifiers you have to calculate. You're probably going to forget some. And when I play solo and having this plexi, I mean, it's really nice. I can just scribble whatever I want. You know, it's great. Um, as I draw a nonsense gold drawing there. But when you're doing it on camera, sometimes you kind of forget. You try to go slow and remember it, all that. You know, but even if you play and you forget some, it's not game-breaking. It's great. I mean, I love it. You, you can actually keep playing. And that's something I think I used to be really uptight about, was getting all the rules correct. Now I'm just playing and just trying to get as much as I can. And if I mess something up, you know, I make sure I look it up and I change that. And uh, so speaking of that, I actually have this sort of player's aid I made, and I just updated it, so I've included some new sections on, uh, let's see, retreats. I have some stuff on armor attrition there in the bottom right. I have a section on advance after combat and uh, ground unit coordination. Things that I was kind of messing up because I was, I was flubbing up the small details. So, you know, I posted that on Board Game Geek. It's also posted on Consim World. So check it out if you want to take a look at that player aid. It's free and uh, download it. It's just two pages you print. I throw mine in a little sleeve. Works great. Keeps a nice little summary of all the main rules. Okay, so that was a little bit of pre-talk. Uh, I'll try not to keep this to a minimum, but since I made such a big mistake uh, last turn, I really wanted to go over it and discuss what's going to happen. So I guess let's just move on and let's start turn two. Uh, one thing I need to do that, that you do at the end of the turn one is I need to flip all these guys back over. So like he gets his command points back, artillery gets resupplied, uh, and so on. Let's see. And this, unfortunately, one of these artilleries does not get, if we come look over here, and uh, salt see. We'll see that they have this uh, infantry there. They actually cannot get this to flip over this turn. It's one of the special rules. It's one of the more powerful artillery units in, on the board, a seven. I mean, that's amazing. It's really nice, but it doesn't get to work this turn. We gotta wait one more turn before we can get it to turn over. Uh, I think that's it, because I didn't really use command points with anybody else. And okay, so let's do, let's take a look at our turn now, our turn track. And we're going to do a weather roll, so let's take a look here. First one roll die for weather. It's a six. Pull that around so you can verify. Six. As we can see, that is going to be clear weather. Now we will roll for initiative to see who's going to go first in this turn. And the Germans get a plus one die roll modifier because uh, and during one of their combats last turn, they were able to advance two hexes. Uh, anytime you can advance up to two hexes in a combat, you get a plus plus one to your initiative roll on the next turn. So that's one way that you can start building that up. Also, if your opponent passes, uh, because maybe they want to have a different unit move or do a combined formation, uh, you also get a plus one. So Germans have plus one, so we have two not. Rolling. Oh, doesn't even matter. Soviets get a nine, Germans get a two. Therefore, it is a Soviet game turn. They're gonna start first. Why is going first important? Well. If you go first, you basically get to dictate how many activation markers you want to put in, um, and then you force your opponent to react to that. So that sounds like a weird rule, and what that kind of means is uh, you can decide, oh, if I have like, the Soviets get a lot of formations in this game, but sometimes you might have a really beat up formation that you don't want to be activating. So like in my other games, you know, the third tanks, they don't fare so well. Like there's only a couple units left of them. There's that couple units up here, there's one, you can't see it off board here, that I'm on camera, a motorized infantry, and then there's these guys. You know, most likely they're gonna start biting the dust pretty quickly, and the third tank will become a non-existent, or, or not really non-existent, just not a non-effective force. So if you go first in a turn, you decide how many activation markers you wanna place into the cup, and then your opponent can place up to that many plus one more. So if you wanna put in fewer, then that can kinda of hamstring what your opponent does. Um, it's it's one of those interesting rules that, you know, when I play solo, I basically put everything in, except in this one, there's so many that sometimes you have to be like, nope, this unit's not going to move or do anything. I'm just not going to activate it this turn. Um, so that's one, of those, that's one of the importance of going first. It lets you kind of dictate maybe how many markers are going to go into the battle. Uh, and that's an interesting advantage. I think when you play face-to-face, -face, it has a lot more effect than solo. Honestly, a solo, 
because the bluffing mechanic involved with the uh, activation markers is absent so because I just kind of know what gets pulled and I know what the other person has. Um, and I don't get to pass without them seeing what I drew, which is a big face-to-face -face factor. You can draw an activation marker and think, oh, I don't want to move my third tanks right now. I want to keep them in place because if I move them, that leaves them vulnerable to counterattack or like the German opponent will know that, that you know, those forces aren't going to move again in the turn. So there's a lot of bluffing that goes on in face-to-face -face that you don't get in the solo game. And that's okay with me. The chip pull is, is providing enough randomness that I don't worry about that. But in a face-to-face, -face, that definitely would be a key strategy is sort of that bluffing of the forces you have. So going first, that's sort of a little bit of the reasons why going first is, is an advantage. And not to mention that you just get to move first, which is huge. Okay, if we look at the sequence of play, we did the weather phase. We're going to do the reinforcement phase. So now that it's 13 p.m., let's take a look and see what kind of reinforcements we're going to get here. Nice. Some more things for the 21st tanks for the Soviets. They enter on the east edge any hex or those northern hexes. We also get a bridging unit and some more airplanes. Or I keep calling them planes. These are like air wings or sort of an abstracted air force or... I, I'm not using the proper terminology. It's not like one plane. It's like more like a, not a squad or anything, but it's, it's a collection of planes. Um, flip over those guys. The Germans, though, be, get a huge boost. The 8th Panzer begins rolling in with the majority of its forces that are left. I mean, there's only a couple more that roll in afterwards. Uh, this is it. And we get Manstein. And we get some artillery and some more tanks. So a lot of things are going to come on the board. Uh, all German reinforcements always come down through this hex. Uh, Soviet ones kind of get varied, and you kind of can choose, you know, do I want to do on the east? Where do I want to do on the east here? Sorry, that's really out of focus. There we go. We're going to come through the north. I'm not too afraid of the north right now. That sounds, I say that, and of course, you know, here the Germans are. Very nearly up here to go take uh, Gordichier, but I think it's going to take them at least a turn or two. They might zoom up and go take Uthergorsch. I don't know, I might be able to get some... Maybe some of these third tanks over there. I don't know. It's going to be tough, but I don't really want to dilute my 21st tanks force that is moving down the road now. As you can see here, they're coming down to Solzy. I don't really want to dilute their total strength by sending half of their forces up here. Uh, because honestly, the 14 a.m. turn, you get a lot of forces, the Soviets. I mean, you get a huge line. It just goes down those two lines together. It's all those guys and all those. And those guys take the northern uh, edge normally. So if I can just wait a turn, really good forces are going to pop in. So I think I'm just going to really stick to it and keep the Soviet reinforcements coming in over here. Again, I have to decide do I want them to do the northern or southern approach, as we discussed last time. You know, this river kind of dictates which side you're going to be on. I don't see a lot of German pressure on the south. That could change. I don't know. Okay, so let me think about reinforcements. And then we'll go to looking at the activation markers, and we'll get started. All right, just as a reminder, these are the activation mar markers we currently have in play. Uh, no new formations are coming in this turn. So uh, the Germans only get an SS formation that comes in. That's their only additional formation. Otherwise, this is all the markers they always get. Uh, the Soviets, of course, receive several other uh, formations kind of make their way into battle. But this is what we have. So I'm going to put all of mine in because, of course, it's still very early, nothing is destroyed, and I need all the movement I can get as a Soviet player. Put that one in there. We'll take ours here. All right. It is a Soviet turn, our initiative, so let's pull this back. And get a view of Saltsy as we... So the 21st tanks, that's pretty good because they're still motoring down the road. I say motoring for everything. Some guys obviously walk. You know, some guys are trucking. You know, some guys are actually in a motor car. Um, I just say motoring a lot. Sometimes you get stuck. You know, you say a word and then you kind of get stuck saying it a lot. Uh, I'm really guilty of that all the time. Okay, so over there, we can see I put the reinforcements there for um, the 21st tanks because I didn't want them going on the southern road. I'm going to keep them on this northern road. Um, 
because I just want to get them down as quickly as possible. The southern road's a little longer and elongated, takes longer to get places. And as you can see, these units, there's a four, there's another four, yeah, and a five. These are powerful, but they're slow moving. So I want to just take the path of least resistance. I want to take the path that's the shortest. So that's what that's all about. So let's go ahead and uh, first let's move these guys because honestly the fours are gonna not be able to move very far. So this is the terrain we're looking at. Let's get a little closer and just sort of think about what we want to do. Now we can start thinking about how we can defend Solzy because the 202 is still there. They're still kind of restricted. They can't stack more than two. So I need to bring the 21st tanks in to actually maybe hold some of these city hexes. And if I get lucky, the next turn I can start building strong points. Um, so I can really start locking down the city hexes. It's already tough enough. You have to use assault combat. But having a strong point would give me die roll modifiers. So uh, even more. So that's really a good idea if I can do it. So let's take a look. That's Salt Sea. There's our units kind of right there. Okay, so you see this guy. He's an army unit. He's an army tank. He's really far away. Let's get a little closer to him actually see what I'm talking about. Uh, you can tell he's an army unit because he's white. And he's got doesn't have a color on it. He's just white. And he can be activated as long as he, for free or like without rolling, uh, as long as within four hexes of an HQ and it's that HQ's turn. So we're one, two, three, four away. So he can go. Uh, and because he's motorized or because he's got a red box movement or even orange circle army units count for this too, uh, they get to move twice in a turn. So he can be commanded here by the 21st tanks, but later maybe the 70th or some other, or maybe the 202 headquarters uh, wants to use them for something, then they can as well. And there's a little marker that you put on them to say first or sec or first or final activation. Because, of course, leg infantry uh, army units like this uh, engineering unit there, they only get one activation, and then they don't get to move anymore. Uh, this game doesn't have a ton of army units. Roads to Moscow has a lot more army units. So, you know, that's one of the other differences in the series. So I'm going to go ahead and mark him, or I'm going to activate him, because he's a nice little zero stack guy, and I want to get him in the battle. So we're going to move him four. That's and one, and two, and three, and just outside of Sultzy with the four. And just so you can see that marker, I'll go ahead and place that on him. Just so you can see what that looks like. So there, yeah. First activation, right? And then there's another one that says final. Um, that's how you keep track of how many times they've been told to do things in this turn. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab this uh, motorized infantry up here. So it's, and let's see where we can go here. So yeah, he can get down the city. So let's go ahead and put him down the lower city hex. To defend, and we'll go ahead and remove this green thing because I know that's a victory point hex. We'll put him there. Um, we'll take this armor car here, and he, you know, armor cars are great because they can go hit up artillery or go cut supply. I feel like I don't use them aggressively enough when I play with them. They have high movement value. I just, I use them essentially as like fast moving defensive filler, and I really should be using them more as fast moving supply cutter or artillery killer or, you know. Armored car, chaser, downer. Um, I probably should just try to do that, but honestly, the German position... Eh, just tell me there's enough for me to exploit right now. So let's just move him up and have him sit with this guy, because we'll just provide a little more punch in that defensive part in that city. So that's and one, and two, and so that's two men, yeah. Uh, the other thing, of course, is our HQ. You want to get it close, but not too close. So we'll go and one, and two, and we'll have him stack here with the, uh, actually we'll just keep him back here. Because um, then he can sit with that tank right now in case something weird happens and the Germans can maneuver around and get to him. Uh, because I'm thinking I'm going to set the 21st tanks up here in Salty, so keeping him a few hexes back is, is fine. I think that's going to be far enough away that it's okay. So that's those forces, and we'll go back up here and we'll get our reinforcements. And we'll just go ahead and take our tanks and move them four spaces. So it's and one, and two, and three, and four. And because we know they move four spaces, and the, mech and the motorized infantry can move five, we'll just go ahead and move him and five, right? So he gets out of the city. 
Okay, so more relief is coming, particularly that infantry unit, which is a good defensive unit, is coming down here to Sulzi. So we're beginning to form our defensive uh, line uh, because, of course, just down there is the 8th Panzer. And, of course, many, many more 8th Panzer units are down there coming up. Okay, so that was 21st Tanks. Let's see what the German one's going to be. Third motorized. So this takes us back down here. We have those units that kind of came in during the second activation last turn. We didn't get any third motorized units uh, for reinforcements this turn. A lot of their forces come in uh, next turn. So we just have those two guys and, of course, the guys up there. So let's try to get these guys in the action. What we need to do is move them up. And they need to get up to this northern road because that, that, that attack's going to need help. And plus, we just have such a juicy unit here and artillery. Just wonderful. So let's try to get this uh, motorized infantry up the line. We'll go ahead and just I'll get these out because I don't want to get oils all over my sweet counters. All right, and one, and two and three and so that's three and oh is that where i want to go no what i'm going to do is set is this well because yeah these guys are pretty well all right here's what we're gonna do actually so that's three and we're gonna pull a little move here Four and, five and, yeah. And then we'll come back here and we'll get our little guy here and he'll go and one and two and three and four and. So he can't actually enter that four sex because he's already at four and a half movement and that would require another movement because he's orange circle and that requires one to go in a trail another. So we'll keep him there. Um, so I'm fairly confident that third tanks are not going to slip around and go get their infantry unit. I think they're going to be lucky to get away with their lives. And what I'm hoping to do here is now we'll just get these. So I was trying to take Gordichier. I was thinking, oh, maybe I should do that. But then I'm also thinking, oh, wait, if I can just get some of my motorized forces, maybe I can go get this very juicy HQ target, right? So yeah, it's only got three, four, five, six defense. This guy's a three defense. So yeah, it would be tougher. And I still don't have a motorized attack. Hmm. And what does this attack hold? That one can be... So this is going to be an eight to three. So yeah, it's still going to be a two to one assault. And that's not going to be very fun. Well, apologies for the sudden cutoff. I uh, once again ran out of storage on my camera. Actually, I'm just using my iPhone for this, to be quite honest. Um, it's just an iPhone 5. Uh, I'm about to get a new iPhone, and I think I'm going to get the one with much more memory because this one's just a 16 gigabit one. Of course, it doesn't. I have a lot of other things on it. So I can record about 25 minutes of video, and then it, it's totally full. So, as we were discussing last time, before we were interrupted, we're trying to decide what we're going to do with the third motorized. And I moved the, uh, the bottom forces up to here, and in the thought that maybe I'll try to use my next activation to sort of come up here and attack them. So the question is, do I move these forces to begin doing that, to support that and block them from escaping? Or do I just sort of uh, try to take out Gordichier there? You know, do I try to use my forces to come attack here? It's not great odds. I mean, I would have essentially eight, six, seven, eight, three. So it's two to one attack again. Uh, and I wouldn't even have a great differential in ER, just one. Uh, I can cut this guy off and I can try to just go to Utrecht, which is not a half bad idea. In fact, I just kind of thought of that. I don't know why I don't think of these things more often. You know, I'm just not the best strategist, let's put it that way. Uh, but as you can see, I could kind of like... I could take these guys and cut over here and just threaten to cut supply off for him by cutting this road off, but then also threaten to go take that victory hex up there. Um, 
of course I'm putting myself out of supply if I do that and uh, I probably should have looked to see if I was out of supply last turn or this turn because as I mentioned about supply you have to be within seven hexes of the main road and you can't have your trace supply be interrupted by streams or other uh, un, you know hexes you can't move through normally right uh, or that supply couldn't just easily get over so I think they were pretty much in supply. We're just gonna, I'm pretty sure they were in supply because they weren't that far up and it's fairly close to the road here. Like you can see the road is, uh, you can get to access with here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, you can be all the way up here. And I'm pretty sure they were close. Hmm. Might've been wrong there. That might be another mistake I've made, but that's okay. We'll just kind of roll with it and see what happens here. So I'm really I'm kind of conflicted about what I want to do here because I, and it shouldn't be this hard of a decision to be quite honest. I should just be like go go for it up there and take that guy out two to one attack odds, you know? Or or am I going to try to get this HQ? Uh, you know, I think I'm going to try to go for the HQ because it's worth a lot of points, you know. And what's interesting, of course, is that let's see, I have under him. He has that. That's a great unit to take out if I could. And the that sucks. I couldn't get rid of that guy earlier. So you know, I'm thinking let's let's go for the HQ. Even though I drove all the way up here, I probably could have just done that, or should I just go for that guy? All right, let me take a break and let me come back with my decision. Okay, I'm back. And what I've decided is I'm gonna back up these guys a little bit. I've decided that I shouldn't have had them go with the HQ road because, or come up this way to sort of attack the HQ. I should have just had them instead take, uh, what was it, this cut off and just come up this way to reinforce that. Because honestly, I need to clear this northern road. I need That's a supply point for me, and if I'm going to have any success in holding the northern part of the map, I've got to clear this road. And this guy is just a lone defender. And if I go here, this is a juicy VP target, you know, the HQ there. But it's just too well defended, and I would have to spend at least another turn backing these guys down the road and getting to the point where they could make a good attack. It's just sort of a waste of momentum and effort. And I should really be focusing on the most direct goal, which is secure the northern road. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back these guys up a little bit. And that's pretty easy to do because we knew this guy was at, what, four and a half? He couldn't, he couldn't go here. So we know that's, so that's four, three and, three, two and, two, uh, one and, one and there. And I think we could even double check that by looking at the entry hex and saying and Yep, so we're totally right on. And uh, because we know that this was just a little bit a little bit faster, it goes right there. So I think instead of going up there, we're going to have them sort of take this other road and head up that way. So if we take this, uh, we'll start with our start with our artillery because it's uh, slower. So it's and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Yeah, it'll go there. And, and also, and while this guy could go up here, because it would be 5 and for him, because it's 4 and as well, and then it's 5 and, we'll probably just keep him with that, because I don't want to leave my artillery open for attack from, from, uh, now we can move a little closer. I don't want to leave that artillery just sitting there with this guy. He could come down. I mean, he's not very powerful, but, you know, artillery by itself is just 1. That's 4. Yeah, I mean, it would be great, but for me to lose a really key piece of artillery would be devastating right now for the third motorized. So we'll just keep them here because this allows them to move up later and hopefully we'll be able to support that attack. So let's go ahead and move up here and figure out where these guys are going to go. That's not the best angle, is it? There we go. This is a much better angle. I say that and I'm not very happy with it. Sorry guys, a lot of fiddling with the camera here. All right, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna just try to go to the right of this guy and cut him off. We'll be putting ourselves out of supply, but he'll also be on a ticking clock, and I'm confident we can push him around before we suffer ill consequences. So this is one. So the thing is, remember, orange circle units get stuck in zones of control. So this guy can power through. I mean, this is one, two for any zone of control, three, four, and yeah, we'll just go there. So that cuts off his supply now because we've cut this road off 
up there, as you can kind of, we'll get a little closer and you can see. That road is cut off, so he is now going to be out of supply. Or he will be, actually. Technically, I guess he could... He can do some weird trace. So he can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and that would technically put him back in supply. So we're going to have to do some other things to cut off his ability to do that. So we got this other guy. He's going to come down, and I think what we'll do with him is he'll just go one, two, three, four, and he gets stuck there, right? Because of uh, zone of control. So we'll keep him there. Uh, this is where I can make a difficult decision. Do I want to do... And by the way, this was a mobile combat. I've been sort of lax on that. I've been, I should be saying whether it's a mobile or assault uh, sequence. It's a mobile one. I used all my movement. So do I want to do a two-to-one attack when I am waiting for my reinforcements, which are right here? And will they be able to make it? Let's see if they could actually make it. So it would be one and two, three and four and five and, yeah. So they won't even make it up there this turn. And see, the thing is, two to one attacks on the assault table because I don't have any mobile units. I mean, that's kind of brutal. That can be real brutal real fast. Uh, and we just don't have a ton of advantages. And he's sitting in a city. Mm. Uh, this almost makes me wish I could just get that. Um, move this guy, like, right here. Yeah. I could do it and hope the third tanks don't go, but since that's their 50% chance of going next, they could just come down and snipe that uh, artillery. I could try to just keep him here and react move, and, and maybe just try to grab that and save him, but reaction move could be kind of difficult with a six. I mean, I could get it, but not a guarantee. But if I don't put this guy here, then I don't think he's going to be able to make it up to that combat next activation. So let's take a look. Can he make it if he was there? It would be and one two, and, three, and, four, and, now, because this would be five, and, six, and, and he just can't do that. So, we'll, yeah, we'll just keep him here. That's it's unfortunate. So, there, I guess we're back to the original question. Do I press my luck, and do I go for a two-to-one assault? Let me think about it, and I'll come right back. Okay, I've decided. I'm probably being way too cautious. I am not going to an attack here. A two to one assault is just not great odds. Uh, also, I'm not well positioned enough that if I did get a retreat result that I would make him pay for it by like potentially losing a step, which is, you know, if, if you're gonna go for low, low odds attacks, then you wanna make sure that when you even get a minor result like a retreat, or which would be a really good result in this case, uh, that you capitalize on it and you get the most out of it. So I think I'm gonna wait that's probably being a little too cautious. I probably should have just grouped around this HQ unit and made attacks on it. I'm probably just not making the right decision. It happens. You know, but that's that's the way it goes. Um, Soviets are going to make errors. I'm going to make more errors to the Germans. I'm going to make more errors to the Soviets. That's the one nice thing about having one brain on both sides is that you're, you're equally allowed to screw up for both sides. Um, so yeah, I think we'll just hold off there and we'll wait and see what we can do with the next activation. Okay, so third motorize is gone. Let's do the next chit, which is going to be a Soviet one. Two o two. So once again, the two o two for this turn only, and the next turn they're free to do anything they want. That's normally allowed units of their type. Uh, so they're over here, if you remember. So they're pretty snug as a bug, kind of right now. I'm trying to think if there's anything I really want to do. I mean, that guy can't really do anything. Oh, sorry, it's got some sun coming in now. It's actually sunny in Portland today. So do I want to do anything with them? I can't build strong points. Remember, that's the one other, that's the one other hit, hiccup here. I'll tell you what I could do, though. I could maybe go try to snipe that, this guy. Ooh, would I want to do that? I could get eight. He could go. He could get away, but I could get a four to one assault on him. Um, 
I would be kind of compromising my line, but they're already weakened because I, they've already lost one of their guys because of that attack. So maybe, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to be aggressive. Let's take advantage of maybe something that doesn't not going to happen a whole lot. Two o two. I have a good little line here, but of course the eighth is hurting, and we don't really know what's going to happen. I could come down here and attack it. I go what? And one. So that'd be and, and then plus one for crossing the stream. So that was and one, that'd be two and a half. And I could go here, three and a half, four and a half. Well, if I have a five unit, I can go here and attack and then bring another guy there. That could be very interesting, but of course, if I bring a guy over in the stream, I have a real danger of having him get trapped over here and not be able to easily get back in time to defend. But this is too good of an opportunity to really pass up. So we got our five units here, so we could just even go, here's a bridge here, I can just go one, two, three, four, five, because it'd be one to go there across the stream, one enter the zone of control. Uh, it's not a half bad idea, maybe. Because, yeah, it leaves me a little open, but at the same time, if I can knock off one of their units in the open, let's make them pay for that artillery. Let's make them pay. Remember the artillery unit? Uh, what was he? Remember the... Remember this guy? Although he was caught back flat-footed and couldn't do anything, but remember him? Okay. Uh, so we'll take... It goes one, two, three, four, five... These guys both have others of four and five, so that's and one and two, three, because of the zone of control. And we'll attack here. So this is going to be straight up assault combat. First thing we do is we say, can we combat refuse? We definitely can. So let's see what he can do. Um, he's got a seven. We don't we don't get to do I get to use any of them? Let's take a look here. I have this handy player aid sheet. Let's see what it says. Okay. So for combat refusal, they must have red box MA or be cavalry and they cannot be disrupted. So we conduct an ER check. Oh yeah, we don't get to use any points. So we're using ER check here. So we're trying to get that seven. <laughs> Bad news. Roll a 10, another 10. So he's gotta stay. And that's all we can do there, because there's no, I guess I could react move. There are some guys that could maybe react move. Um, they have to be within two hexes. So let's see, we do have some units here that could react move over. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, these all could react move. I didn't really think about that, but they may not be able to get all those. We have to do it on a unit by unit basis, and you can go up to half its MA uh, moving over there. So, I mean, that would still be one, two, yeah, because that'd be one, two, the and, the three and, so only the seven units could go. So I could get three more defensive things. Yeah, what do I got here? So yeah, we'll try to do that. We'll try to get, since he needs as much help as he can get, otherwise he's gonna get toast. So only the seven units can make it, because when you come, when you do um, a reaction movement, you only get half your MA, and you have to be within two hexes. So there's two of those, and it's unit by unit basis. So I'll roll two die. Oh my goodness, you would not believe this. Two tens. How am I doing this? I'm, I need to get like a dice tower or something. I got some cursed dice. We're going to we're gonna swap out the other dice. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to swap out new dice. Let's come to that. Okay, so none of those guys make it. So that means nobody can help. So now we just start doing our odds here. Um, the Germans will bring, bring a plane in to help out their beleaguered motorcycle infantry. Uh, the Soviets will not, because we're just going to try to make this happen. Uh, so let's roll for that. It gets a plus one, because it's mobile combat. I won't be using command points to get this roll. Uh, yeah, so it's an eight. So eight plus one is nine. That means it fails, so we don't get the plane. Um, I don't have any artillery, or I could use that, because the eighth panzer does not have its artillery. It's all stuck waiting to come on the board, so there's no artillery for either side. Uh, because it's an assault, we don't have to use ground unit coordination because everybody's from the same formation, and assaults, as long as they're from the same formation, uh, you're good to go there, so they're all attacking. So this is an assault combat. Let's do, let's calculate the odds. We have, 
Let's see. Nine. So that's eight. Eight plus nine in the hair. Eight plus nine is what? Uh, 17? Uh, so we got 17 to two. Let's see. Where, let's get a little over here so I can write this out for you. So we got 17 to two, which comes down to, what is that? Not eight to one. It's six to one, right? No. Six times six is twenty. Um, seven. Yeah, what am I doing? Yeah. Wait, no, what am I doing? It's eight to one. Because two goes into 17 three times. Okay, because yeah, two times eight is 16. All right, so it's eight to one odds. So we got like the best assault we can do. It has to be assault combat. Uh, we go through and we say, what kind of things we have to do here? Let's see. Terrain. He gets plus one for the terrain bonus. All right, so, sorry, we're gonna do this up here. Plus one for the village. And the ER differential here, we'll go ahead and put our five unit up. We'll put this three, four, five up as their lead unit. So it's gonna be minus two because the different, or it's gonna be plus two because the difference is not in our favor. So we're gonna get a plus three to our roll on the highest odds assault. So here we go. Oh yeah, rolling a one. So one plus three is four, and a four on the eight to one assault, or it can only go to seven to one, I'm sorry. So a four, for reals, oh man, attacker one, defender three, retreat. Um, so I actually have to lose a step, oh my goodness, way to go. So he loses a step, actually I lied, I totally lied about that, and I'll tell you why I lied about that. I didn't mean to lie to you, I just remembered another one of those rules, rules, okay. So, the result we got here was a four, a modified four, and that's attacker one, defender three, retreat. If the defender cannot satisfy their step loss requirement, right, so he has to lose three steps, but he only has one step to lose, because it's just one step unit. For every step he can't satisfy, the attacker does not have to lose a step. So because there's two steps he can't satisfy, this attacker would be able to absorb up to two of its own losses. So this guy goes away, they suffer no loss, even though the CRT mandated it, mainly because these forces just couldn't hang, couldn't hold up. So, wow, really great move there. Nice little counterattack. Now, see, getting that artillery was nice, but now I'm thinking, ugh, that's what happens when you get aggressive and get risky. Now I'm looking not so good here, looking a lot tougher for the old uh, German forces. A lot tougher than it was in my last game. Um, okay, so that was the 202. We're not even going to move the HQ. I'm not really worried about it. It's doing great back there, so let's just keep it there. All right, let's take a look at the German activation, and then, uh, yeah, so there we go. Next turn. Third motorized again. All right, so I'm going to take a look at third motorized. As you remember, we have these forces down here. They're moving up, and they're trying to go help their buddies who are up here around Gordiche attacking that or uh, motorized infantry. So I'm going to take a break here, and I'm going to try to decide what I'm going to do with these guys, and when I come back, we'll... Get the third motorized rolling. Okay, so I thought about it, and uh, we're going to do something. I mean, we're going to carry out what we talked about doing last time with third motorized. I'm going to try to put some pressure on this unit holding Gordichier. And although the other units will not be able to bring their full attack power to bear, I can get the artillery unit close enough that it's going to be able to give me, hopefully, uh, I think no matter what I roll, unless I roll a 10, I can believe with it, it's going to give me an ability to get a shift. So I get at least three to one assault odds. And we're going to do that thing where we sort of get around the units so that way in case it retreats, we may be able to get another step loss off of it for free. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my guy here, and he's going to go one, two, three, four. We're going to keep that anti-tank unit where it's at. Coming down here, so we're going to snake this guy up, and what he's going to do is go... One, and two, three, and four, and five, and. And because we know that's five, and for that guy, we automatically know that his trailing artillery unit will probably go there, because that would be four, and. And as you can also see, oh, see, I'm sorry, I'm not doing a great job of keeping everything in frame. So as you can see here, the artillery unit has a range of five. It's one, two, three. So it can totally reach that unit when we attack it. And that's actually what we're going to do now. We're going to declare assault combat against this guy. 
He can react move, and um, actually he will try to react move, because if I can keep him alive and waste this attack, then that's just going to waste momentum for the Germans, and I can pull him back, and, and since the third tanks are going to go next, I can pull him back to Utrecht maybe, so this could be his one chance for survival. Okay, baby, so let's get our new die. We're going to try to roll a combat refusal. we got to beat five or less. That does not work. We get a seven. So he casts a say there for that battle. Um, there's no one else who can react move to him, and he cannot do no retreat. So we move on to the next part, and we say, okay, are you bringing in any close air support? Well, he is going to bring in close air support. Um, ooh, well, he's got two planes, so he has two players, two planes left. So we will bring one in because even though it's just one unit, um, the, it's going to be a two to three to one assault combat, and one die roll modifier can be huge in those kind of odds. So we will bring a plane in. The Germans will as well. Um, this was a mobile sequence, so we are going to get a plus one to our roll here. So we'll roll both die and see what we get. Both planes come in. Uh, so actually what we'll do is that kind of offsets each other, but if we do get an armor attrition result, we will roll to see if they uh, survive this mission or not. So that's close air support. Uh, next we move on to artillery. There is nothing the defender can use. I can, as the attacker, I can use this, so I will. I flip this guy over. And uh, because I'm trying to get this artillery to work, and I don't want to whiff it by rolling a natural 10, because I get a plus one for being a mobile combat, um, I'm going to use two of my command points up here with my HQ for this artillery roll. So I get to subtract two from my roll. So actually, I subtract two and add one. So the net result is minus one to my roll. So I roll this die. It's a good thing I did that, right? It's nine. So it goes down eight. That's not good enough to pass the ER check of the artillery unit. So what happens is, instead of getting all three points that I would normally get, I get half that uh, rounded down. So I get one point, actually, from this guy. And that's really okay. That's just enough for me to get three to one uh, odds, as we'll see here. So let's calculate our um, total odds. It is, let's see, six, seven, eight to three, but we also had plus one for our artillery, so that is actually nine to three, so that's three to one. We start calculating the DRM modifiers. There's no hex side modifiers. We're attacking through clear. He is in a village, so he gets plus one to the roll. So we'll do a plus one. The ER differential, we're going to be using this anti-tank unit as our lead unit because I don't want to risk losing a step on my motorized. Uh, although, nah, we're going to, we're going to, we're not going to do that. We're going to lead with this motorized here. So we're going to get a minus one on our ER differential. So let's back this up just a bit. So get minus one for ER. That gives us a zero total modifier. Okay. We don't have to do combat coordination. Oh, we do have to do combat coordination because this... Oh, no, it's an assault, and we're all attacking from the same formation, and we're not disrupted, so no combat coordination roll is needed. So now we just do our final battle roll. Mm -mm. Okay, so seven. Let's see, how, see what this is going to be like. Seven on a three to one. Not the best. Attacker one, defender one, and armor attrition. Well, we don't have any armor units in this battle, but we do, and we do have to roll for the planes, though, so that's going to be interesting. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's roll for our planes. We'll make the blue uh, Soviet die. Wow, they both survive. So that's pretty good. Okay, so what do we have? We have three to one. We'll roll seven. Attacker one, defender one. So that was unfortunate. <laughs> Because he doesn't lose that much, and I just lost more than that. I lost more power than that, and plus I lost a step on a very powerful unit. Um, not exactly what I was hoping for, not the worst result that could have happened by far. Uh, not exactly what I wanted, though. Okay, so that's that attack. Um, dang, just unfortunate. So there's only one shit left, or one activation marker left for the Soviets. That is the, oh, there we go, third tanks. So the reason that was kind of unfortunate is now this, this guy's going to be able to skedaddle. <laughs> he can leave. And we also have, um, sorry, we got the sun is definitely coming in now. 
we got sort of weird effect. Yeah, we'll just kind of go here. In fact, let me go ahead and let me see if I can close some curtains and fix this camera real quick. Okay, that should be a little better. That was it's rare to have that much sunlight in Portland, but it really is a nice day today. Um, so you can't be too upset with that. Anyway, okay, so back here we are. It's the third tanks movement. This is the final Soviet activation for this turn. Um, so there's that unit there that's trapped. We're definitely going to have to get them out of the pocket there. We have those units, and we have that one up there. So I think it's, we're going to do a, pretty much a general retreat across the board. Um, getting pushed back. And just need to save these forces. They haven't died yet, which is kind of amazing. I've done a very poor job as the Germans being able to take out the third tanks here. So let's go ahead and pull them back to uh, Sultsy. Let's get these guys out of here. So we got a five and a five. Okay, great. And because of red box, they could just power through. So that'd be and, but it's one and for the zone of control. Two and three and four and well, they can't get into Sultsy proper, so we'll just keep them here. Actually, we'll keep them up here. Nah, we'll keep them on the road just in case something happens. The Germans break through. We'll keep those guys there. Now, if we think about what we're going to do with this HQ unit, I think the last time what I did is, is I sort of moved these third tank survivors up to here, and I had them build a strong point there later, and that actually was really helpful because... Um, Later, I was able to have my northern unit sort of utilize this space as a jumping point down here because it's a great point to start launching attacks, especially when they start when the Soviet forces or German forces get around Sultsy. Uh, you can launch attacks from this hex down, hex down here and get down the trails and cut the route very easily. So I think I might just do that too. That was an effective strategy last time. It's a great way to pull back, and that's a good terrain. It's defensible terrain, and I think the Panzers uh, won't be able to get to it, so that's going to be very helpful. So what we're working with here, we got a five, a six, and a five. Um, let me make sure they can move, because I know there was a turn they could not move. Oh, just on the 13 a.m. turn, so it can move now. So we say a five, a six, and a five. Okay, so we're going to do, that's one, two, and three, and four, and. So we'll keep them up there. That's a good spot because, they had, like I said, it's a good jumping off location. It's nice. It's also up there. It's close to Utrugorsh. And, uh, yeah, it's a nice little location. So it's also easily defended. Once I get a strong point there, it's going to be tough to crack. It. That's a village. It's only got one bridge hex in. Tough to get around. Uh, tough to maneuver around there. It's like a uh, movement point like Absorber. <laughs> it just sucks it all up. Okay, and this guy's going to pull back too because I'm just going to let them have Gora DCA. They're going to get overwhelming attack odds next turn anyway, um, so it's just time to get get the heck out of dodge. So this is also and one and because it's and, but it's also one for the zone of control. So one and two, and three, and four, and five. Perfect. So that puts me in that city there, and that keeps me close to Utrugorsh. So that's nice. I'm a little closer to that unit as well. We've got this sort of backed up line. This guy moved back here and is holding that city. So yeah, that's pretty effective. And all of that is prelude to what will inevitably be the next turn, which, since the 8th Panzer is not gone, it is time for the 8th Panzer to do its thing. That almost feels a little too dark. Maybe I'll see if I can get those windows open here. So let's do 8th Panzer, and then when I come back, we'll start moving uh, these guys. Okay, so the first thing we should do is probably get our uh, reinforcements moving up the road. That's always an easy move. So I don't think I really went over what we have here. So let's take a look and uh, see what we got. And more hair, because I have two dogs that love to shed. As well as I shed and my girlfriend sheds and everybody sheds. You know how it is. Anyway, um, so here's what we got in the stack. That's sort of... So we got our leader now. This is great because we can, if he's stacked with an HQ, he can use his points uh, to help out with things like artillery coordination roles, coordination combat roles, uh, all sorts of roles. Basically, it's really nice. Uh, we got our HQ here, which is another HQ is great, and more armor and more motorized infantry. So we're kind of getting the heart of the forces here.
Very powerful, very powerful stack there. And then of course we have another stack, mostly artillery and a rocket unit there. Rocket units can only be used on the attack. That 5A means it gets uh, it can only be used during an attack, it can't be defensively fired. Uh, and some army artillery that can be used by anybody. So it's great. We needed artillery, we've been sorely lacking it, uh, and we're getting more armor presence. So let's go ahead and move these guys. Um, looks like they all have motorized movement of six. So let's go ahead and keep them together. Uh, so let's see where they can go. Okay. And one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six. Not bad. Um, and then if we look down here, we're going to have our slower moving artillery units are all fives. Looks like, oh, we do have a red box there. That is, see, that's nice. The, art, the rocket units can keep up and advance. Um, that's very nice. That's one nice thing about rocket units. Um, they don't get to use their thing on defense, but the attack ability and the red box uh, movement is very handy. So we got five here. So we know that these guys were sixes, so they actually just go back like that. Okay, so there we go. Getting closer, as you can see. These are the follow-up element, elements that the designer says should be mopping up the units that technically I should have been bypassing with the forward elements up there. Um, don't, don't leave your axe, buddy. So, oops, you know, that didn't really work out. Okay. So the third tank's unit that we were trying to kill got away. These 202 boys have shown up, and in a way that's kind of good for us because they are infantry and they have a lot of defensive value, and now they're kind of hanging out in the open um, so we can mobile attack them. And I think that's just what we're going to have to do here. So let's... Let's get our boys in line, and let's just see if we can maybe get around them and mobile attack them so we can get closer. Um, let me take a look at the movement here real quick, and then I'll come back, and then we'll just do the turn. So while I was sitting there during the break, well, it was instantaneous for you, but for me it was a break, um, I came to the really sad conclusion that the 8th Panzer forward elements here are not that strong anymore. The loss of two motorcycle infantries um, which were two two units. That's four combat and defense factors missing. So like this stack alone is just now a four attack factors and I think was that four defense? No, five defense. So not that great. Um, this is only just the three attack factors. And because our two two elements are our tanks, two tank companies have been taking step losses. I mean that's just two four uh, seven total instead of the nine. So you know. Taking some damage, making it a little brittle, what this means is, is that I can't just push aside forces like I normally would with the kind of ease that um, the Germans probably would like to have at this point. Um, as you can see, I've got these sort of two units topping me here from the 202 who came down and sniped my um, motorcycle infantry there. This top stack on the road has only seven defensive factors. This one down here has eight. And I can only put together here, I have four here, I have seven there, that's 11, and three. So, what is that, 14 total? Um, yeah, so only 14 attack factors, which means I can only come at this uh, stack here uh, at two to one odds on the mobile table. Um, because I can do mobile combat on them, thank goodness. Uh, that's the one nice thing. Mobile combat is much more friendly to the attacker. Uh, and because of the sort of ER differential we'd have, because they have four uh, units, we probably have a safe role to, to, to do that with. So I looked over the attack, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of create another sort of envelopment effect as much as I can. So what that means is I'm going to take these guys who are all sixes, and they're going to go and, and this is going to be one and because I'm not going to keep using the trail to go that way. I'm going to go this way. So I don't count the trail cost here. So it's and, that's one and because that space is one. And this is two and and the three and because I'm entering the zone of control here. 4 and 5 and, because I'm moving there. Then what I'll do is I'll take these guys and then we'll just go and 1 and 2, 3, stop, because they're you know, the orange circle. And these guys will go essentially 1 and, and then stop there. Um, the stack can stack, it's under 9. So what we've done here now is that we've kind of created an effect where 
the one stack I can get two to one odds on, I've surrounded, so that even if it gets a retreat, I need to look at the rules. It might be able to retreat through them for uh, without taking a loss and then come out here. But that's going to put them down south, down the river, and that's kind of good for me in a lot of other ways because if they're stuck down here, it's going to be harder for them to jump up here, uh, especially if I have zones of control over this area. So, you know, I'm okay with pushing them down that way. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take this attack because I gotta do something and I really need to be striking. And two to one mobile is, is a pretty good attack. Um, if you can make a two to one at least, that's, that's never that bad. Okay, so we'll, we're kind of jumping out of sequence here, but we already know it's gonna be two to one. Mainly because I have no artillery on both sides that can be called in. My artillery hasn't caught up yet for the 8th Panzer. And um, the 202 just doesn't have any artillery on the board um, currently. So we know it's going to be two to one odds. First thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in planes. Um, the Soviets have one remaining air wing left, so they'll bring that in. And the Germans have two more, so they'll bring in theirs. So we'll go ahead and roll die, and we'll make the blue uh, the Soviet die. Interesting. Okay, so we had a five and a six. And because this was mobile combat, we added plus one to it, so it means both these rolls fail. Uh, I probably... Uh, see, I should have spent command points here uh, on doing that, and honestly, well, I've already rolled, so I could go back and spend command points and then sort of get my roll right, because the Germans rolled, what, a five? So I could have gotten that, because I would have been in minus two to my roll, uh, and I still would have been able to pass the ER check. I'm not going to do that. Obviously, I failed that. I still have one more air wing left, so maybe I'll use it next turn. So both these guys will stick around, but they didn't, you know, in case we had an armor attrition result, but they both flew. Um, there's not going to be any reaction movement because they're leg infantry, so there's none of that. There's going to be no, um, they can't combat refuse because they don't have their, uh, they don't have red box MA. And they can't do a no retreat because uh, even though they have three steps of strength there, they're not in a town, a strong point, or have their HQ or an NKVD unit with them. So they don't get to do the no retreat. Okay, so we've done that. We have no artillery. We covered that. Um, we're going to do some coordination checks because it is a mobile attack and we are attacking from more than one hex. So the lead unit is going to be these ill-fated um, motorcycle. You know what actually I'm going to do? I'm just going to put the armored car up. Just going to put the armored car up because even though that armored cars are nice, this is a very mechanized force. So I'm not worried about losing my ability to conduct mobile attacks. Um, and I'm tired of losing two, two units. So let's, let's put a one, one unit up. Uh, so we'll do a seven. So let's calculate our little uh, DRMs here. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to do our coordination roll first. So this is my lead unit. He's got a seven. Uh, it's a plus one because it's a mobile combat. So let's roll and uh, see what that gets us. All right. So it's a five plus one is six. So we pass. And now we do our final die roll modifiers. So defensively, he's not in a town. He's clear. That's bad news for him. We're not attacking through any weird hex sides. Um, so that's it. The DR differential is negative three in our favor. And because we're using armor and mechanized infantry, are we using mechanized infantry? Oh no, we're using motorcycle infantry and armor. I believe that gets us a combined arms bonus. Let me double check on that. And the defender cannot have red defense strength. No, nope, that's totally good. And we have one armored unit plus one or more units of motorcycle, motorized infantry, engineer, or recon. So we have um, motorcycle. So we get a combined arms bonus, minus one. And the most bonuses you can have is plus five or minus five. So I'm here at what, minus four? I'm pretty much at the limit of what I can get. So it's a two to one mobile attack, minus four. Looking pretty good. All right, I roll a seven. So seven minus uh, four is three. Three on a two to one is defender one retreat. So this is good for us. This is where we're gonna this is where we're gonna take a look and see what happens here. So we're gonna do defender one retreat. So he loses one and he would make this guy. Ooh, I could have done that guy. Well, this is the weaker unit anyway, so we'll have him. I could have had that other guy be the stuff guy, but we'll just have him be that. He'll take the loss. And now they have to retreat. So using my nice handy player aid, we see that because they are retreating and it was mobile, it is two hexes. They cannot end an enemy zone of control unless stacking with a friendly. And actually, I need to look this up to see. 
All right, let me double check on our retreat rule. I'll be right back. Okay, so I looked up the retreat rules just to be double sure about how this works. And indeed, friendly units for the purposes of retreat do negate enemy zones of control. So I have to retreat two spaces. Um, I have to go through here. If I didn't go through him um, and instead went to some other hex, I would have to automatically take another step loss and do an ER check because everybody around me has red box or there's red box MA units around me and these units are not red box MA, they're just leg infantry. But since he gets to retreat through a friendly hex, so we'll go one and we'll bump him over here to two. Um, so he doesn't take any loss and we don't have to do an ER check because he technically did not pass through an enemy zone of control during his retreat because friendly units negated it. So that was almost close. I mean, had we been able to pull off the, the total, if we'd been able to seal it off completely, we would have gotten some really nice results there in terms of damage. Um, but that didn't work out. You know, it happens. We got one. That's pretty good. We also can, of course, advance after combat. And... I mean, this is sort of cheap. I'm just going to go like, well, you have to get like two hexes from the attack. What do I want to do? You have to enter the hex you attacked, and then you get plus one more in any direction. So I think these guys will come up. No, yeah, they will come up. And we'll just do that. Um, great. So that's the end of that attack. And of course, there are no more Soviet activation markers, so that leaves the last activation marker, which is the last 8th Panzer marker. So now we need to bring our forces that are lagging behind and really start thinking about how we're going to start approaching Solti with those units. And bring these units up. Let's see, I think there's just plenty of room, so I don't think we'll have to plan too much because these guys, I don't think they'll be able to make it up. And these guys are just five, so let's see how far they can go. And one, and two, and three, and four and five. Yeah, so it's as far as they can go. And that means these guys are sixes. And six, that's as far as they can go. Which is too bad, they're not gonna be able to participate in attacks. Uh, the artillery can help though, it's, this is great. We finally have artillery support rolling up. So now I need to decide what am I gonna do? I can't use my artillery attack. This guy, I think he's too far away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't think I have anything that's got more than a five range. I got six. That's it. Hmm. I could easily get these guys. Um, and they are infantry and they are stubborn. And that is really annoying. And they're going to be able to stack in three together next turn. So this is the last turn I'll be able to get like a free kind of attempt on their reduced stacking. Um, but this unit is also looking really tempting. Um, cause it's just a six, but again, I don't have a lot of firepower here. <laughs> I think I'm moving with what? Yeah. What we did last time, what? Uh, 14. So I could get two to one odds on him. I wouldn't be able to do anything better. And he's in a village. I mean, I could do those kind of things. I don't know. That's gonna, that's gonna be a tough move. I have to think about that. Um, I could obviously come down here and strike again at these guys cause now they're just a six. Uh, these guys are eight, so I still can't tackle them. I mean, honestly, I think what I need to do is take these guys and go here. Partially because it's just six points there. One of them is a tank, and um, that could give me bonus points. And plus, like, moving down here with the streams, it's going to be tough. It's going to eat up a lot of movement. I mean, that's just, that's one and a half to center that hex with the zone of control. Two and a half to go here would be another two movement. Um, or three movement actually, one across the stream, one under the hex, one under his own control. So it's going to be tough to get any kind of units down there. The, the sort of advantage of them going down here and not being able to come up here is vice versa for me. I really can't get down there very easily. Um, <laughs> hmm. So, yes, I think I will attack this unit. Let me stop and think about it and then come back. I'm doing a lot more thinking now because I've already lost too many units as the Germans and I don't want to keep losing more. So let me take a look and come right back. Okay, looking over what I need to do and we are going to attack this stack here. Um, that third tank stack 
that's got the motorized infantry. It's also got a tank underneath it. Uh, I was trying to figure out if I could get a way to do another pincer where I could put a guy here and a guy here and attack, but there's just no way to do that because I'm carrying around these uh, anti-air units that get stuck in zones of control. Uh, pretty soon, thanks to my reinforcements coming up, I'll have plenty of maneuverable forces to help me out in the future. For right now, I just don't have quite enough to get it done. So what instead I'm going to do is I'm going to go 1, 2, because these are all red box guys, so it's cost me 2 to go in here. 2, 3, 4 for the zone of control, 5, 6 for the zone of control, so it's 6 movement total. And then these guys are just going to kind of go and 1, 2, and come here. I could have done the thing where I break these guys off, even though there's not that many of them, right? And uh, move them here and do that. But then again, I'd be facing that increased uh, die roll modifier to my combat coordination roll. And, uh, and it would also just leave these guys kind of hanging. And there's just five, five units there. Leaving them here just could be easy to be surrounded by units, by Soviet units. And, and uh, now I'm totally gun shy because I've lost so many steps anyway. So, you know, that's kind of how it goes. Okay, so we look at this combat, and the first thing we say is, what can the defender do? Can they combat refuse? Well, yes, this one can because they're actually uh, red box MA units, and uh, they can definitely do that. <clears throat> so let's do an ER check. It's going to be tough. We need to beat a four. Nope, they do not beat it. So they can't do a no retreat, which they weren't going to be able to do anyway. And I can't react move with this guy from the 20 or 21st tanks here because he's not in the same formation as third tanks. Reaction movement can only be units from the formation that's under attack. So if, I, if it was 21st tanks that were doing it, then yeah, I could bring them over. But since it's just the third tanks, there's no third tank unit that can react move uh, to them, so they don't get that. So it looks like we're going to have a little combat, a little rumble. Okay, so let's start thinking. What do we need to do? Bring in planes. Well, the Soviets are out of air wings. The Germans still have theirs. So what we're going to do this time is we're actually going to spend... I should have done this last time. But we'll spend two points on the roll because it's going to be a little tougher. So we have a plus or we have a minus through the roll uh, because of the using command points and a plus one because it's a mobile sequence. So total roll of minus one. Don't get it. I got a nine instead. Okay, so any artillery, sadly my artillery is just not close enough. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's not close enough to fire on that hex, and the third tank has no artillery of their own. Uh, then we do uh, ground unit coordination. Uh, I do have to do this roll, so I gotta make it. My lead unit will again be this armor car. So we got a plus one to our roll, because it's mobile. Nice. So we have three plus one is four, so we pass our combat coordination roll. So now we do our final calculations. Um, what did we say we had last time? 14. So let's move this point out of the way up here. So we got 14 to 2. So that's 7 to 1 odds. Oh no, what am I saying? Not 2. Jeez. What? 4 plus 2 is 6. So 14 to 6. So that's actually going to be 2 to 1. Oof. Wow, that would have been really pretty great if I could have gotten that. So 2 to 1. Uh, he's in a village. So plus one village. The ER differential um, is three, so it's minus three. And I also get a combined arms bonus. Again. Oh, actually, I don't. Wait, I'm not sure about that. The defender must not have red defense strength, being a town, strong point, or fortified hex line. And I don't think he has red defense strength. No. Okay, so we total up our modifiers here, and we get a negative three is the total. So we're doing a two to one mobile attack with a minus three to the roll. So let's do that. Oh yeah. Okay, that's a four. So minus three. This is going to be good for us. On a two to one attack. A one result is, oh really? Attacker one, defender two, retreat, armor, attrition. Boo. <laughs> so booey. <sighs> That's boo. So attacker one, defender two, retreat, armor, attrition, result. So because they do have armor there, boo. Um, this is kind of good and bad. It's another, oh wait, it doesn't come from there. Another freaking armor step loss. Ah, 
And I got to roll to see if that plane survives. So that takes me down to negative five VPs. Man, just not not doing so great on this. Need to start killing guys. All right. So because of that, remember the rule that this guy has to take a loss because he is the one that qualified for it. And so let's take a look here. What was the result again? Attacker one, defender two, retreat. So yeah, this guy has to take the first loss and that nets me a point. So I'm down to negative four now. And then it's got to take another loss and it's going to be from this motorized. It's just going to disappear. And then he's got to retreat. And the only place he can retreat and not be an enemy zone of control is to here. And he's got to go two spaces. So we'll go one. Oh man, he's really hurting. I guess we'll go two and hopefully he just won't get obliterated next turn. And then because I had successful combat, I get to do advance after combat. And I will advance. I will actually move these two guys. Oh, these guys can advance, remember? So do I want to advance up? Nah, I'll just keep them where they're at. I kind of like where they're placement at. All right, let's roll to see if this plane survives. Um, going to be tough. It does. Oh my goodness, it survived. All my planes died in the last game I played. All of them basically bit the dust in armor attrition rolls. So that was that was yucky. Okay, um, that's the end of turn two. Um, Let's take a look at the board and do a brief sort of uh, bird's eye view, see what's going on. So as you can see, this is pretty much everybody on the board now. We have the salty action is beginning to happen and the 8th Panzer is pressing and had some minor setbacks and losses, but some good progress. The 70th next turn though is a lumbering giant that will come into action next turn and more of the 21st tanks are coming down the road. If we look over here, the third motorized is around Gordiche, and they will be pushing on up here to Utragorsh. But of course, next turn we'll be getting, or in the next couple turns, more Soviet reinforcements will be pouring from the south, or from the north, and from the south down here. So things are about to get really interesting. These first few turns are just sort of the Soviets are on the back foot, and the Germans are trying to get as far as they can, as fast as they can. So time will tell to see if I've actually done enough damage here. I suspect with all the um, armor losses I've been taking, my victory point totals are going to be kind of low. It's, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be an uphill battle. I don't think I'm going to get the uh, sudden death win at all. I think we're going to have to really focus on chasing down artillery units, HQ units, and um, hopefully holding Soltsy. See if we can build a nice little defensive ring around Soltsy, if we can even take it. So, okay, that's the end of turn two. Moving on to turn three.